Blood. The life force. No life can survive without it. We take it for granted until it's taken away from us. So I was on the floor and I was holding my stomach and I look and I see blood all over. And at the same time I'm on the floor, I'm thinking about how do I get out from here? The impact made my arm explode and it wrecked, like it shattered my whole arm. My nerve system was gone. It felt like a lake. <laughs> it was like a lake of blood just flowing out of me. Either I was gonna bleed to death or I was, he was gonna come again and shoot me. Every shot I was getting, I can feel my body jumping because of the power of the gun, I believe. They were bleeding to death. And so our first priority is to stop the bleeding so that they're not losing blood anymore. And then we have to replace the blood that they have lost. We need blood, get me some blood, get me some blood, get me some blood. Go to the core, get more blood. A city in lockdown, police on the scene with an armed gunman looming, a hospital racing to save lives, and the one thing they need most is nine miles away. All the orders from our agency were coming ding, 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 ding. It's that, because I don't know where this is going to stop, or is this just one event, or is it going to be more? Is this a terrorist attack? I mean, we didn't really know anything, right? I didn't know what he was going to do, but I was just like, you know, hoping that nothing was going to happen. But unfortunately, um, when he was next to me, that's when I felt one of the first ones that got, I got shot in my back. And I just kept telling him, just go, go, please, get me out of here, get me out of here. And I finally made it outside and he dragged me across the street. And that's when the nurse grabbed my head and she was like, he's losing a lot of blood, he's losing a lot of blood. I was holding on, but I was so, so weak from so much blood loss. We felt very helpless and very overwhelmed and very scared, but I would not have wanted to imagine that night if we would have ran out of blood. And before we knew it, thousands of donors began to emerge before our eyes and they literally helped replenish the blood supply in record time. So the people that we treated that night, their lives were saved not by the blood donors that lined up the next day, but by the people who donated one or two weeks prior that had no idea that an event would, like this would occur. And these are the people that had much of a part in their recovery as we did, as much of a part in saving their lives, and they're just as much of a hero as any of us are. When I found out that my donation helped to save a life from the pulse, it really, really made it real. It like connected the dots. My blood saved somebody's life that could have been lost that night. As far as what I, I had done, you know, it was as simple as, as making a bank deposit. It was as simple as dropping off an envelope at the post office. You don't think that that thing is gonna, uh, you don't think that that thing is gonna impact someone in the way that it does. So, here's the question. Are you ready to meet your donors? Yes. Ready. <laughs> <laughs> Nearly a year to the day of the tragedy, several of the survivors are about to come face to face with blood donors who helped save their lives. <laughs> 